run it's been. 25 straight wins. Back-to-back -back national championships. And Eli Drinkwitz, in his fourth season, Drinkwitz has him at number 12, 7 and 1, 3 and 1 in the SEC. Certainly this is a test for Missouri. Harrison Mevis ready to kick. Makai Muse and Dylan Bell are deep. Time to call the dogs. Missouri's in town, and here we go. It's fumbled at the 10 and picked up. And Georgia precariously brings it out to the 18-yard line. Turnovers, turnovers have been a big problem for Georgia. Dylan Bell trying to field that kick. The sun shouldn't be a problem in his eyes where it is in relation to the stadium, but Bell's one of those players that they like to get the ball a lot of different ways. Turnovers could be the quickest way to make this a ball game that Georgia doesn't want. Georgia has a lot of weapons. Ladd McConkey on the outside, along with Dominic Lovett. And, of course, Carson Beck has been terrific. Dejon Edwards behind it. Back to the air. Quick throw. Caught there. McConkey at the 30. That's a 12-yard pickup and a first down. Papa John's lineups. Carson Beck. Who needs Stetson Bennett? I mean, Beck has been terrific. I mean, that was the question all year is how are we going to replace Stetson Bennett? Well, with Carson Beck, he's been Mr. Consistency. The game has really slowed down with him, Rich. We'll get into it as the afternoon progresses, but he's on top of this offense. This offense generates 506 yards a game. Edwards. Nothing going there. All right, the offense, a familiar face to Missouri fans. Dominic Lovett on the outside. Last year in this game, Lovett led all receivers with six catches and 54 yards. But the thing was, that was for Missouri. He's now playing for the University of Georgia. And make no mistake about it, his teammates remember that he decided to leave. Empty now is back. It's second down and eight. Has time. And the ball is deflected. And that's a storyline here. Or did it pop off the hand? It's incomplete. Because Missouri wants to get pressure on Carson Beck, and few teams have been able to do that. Only six sacks allowed all season, but as a defensive lineman, that's what you're supposed to do. Jay Jernigan doing a great job of getting that big right paw up in the throwing lane of Beck. Now, remember, in the Florida game, they were able to come off the edge with some blitzes and got their hands on two of Beck's ball. That's a good sign for Missouri. George is one of the best third-down teams in the country, second in the SEC. Beck pressured, flushed, and a lot of green, and a first down, and a slide into midfield. Missouri coming into this game said, we're going to challenge these guys in man coverage. The problem is when you do that, nobody's got their back to the line of scrimmage. Beck very smartly pulls the ball down and makes him pay with his legs. And when you have big plays like that, Mike Bobo dialing up another play using some tempo. That's the type of play, Rich, that can juice an offense and get you feeling good and lathered up early. Yeah, Beck just overthrew Oscar Delp. He's the guy that is filling in for Brock Bowers. Bowers, by the way, continues to progress after the ankle surgery, and they're hopeful they get him at the end, possibly for the postseason. Second down, 10. And that's Kendall Milton, who has tripped just as he crossed the 50, lands at the 47. Defense for Missouri. How do you guard Lovett in the slot? Well, you do it with Ennis Rakestraw. He's their best cover corner. He's physical. If Lovett and Ra Ra Thomas and McConkey start to become a problem, look for Rakestraw to move into the slot and to take him away. That's going to be some cat and mouse. It's going to be fun and likely have a big impact on the outcome of today's game. Another third down. This third and five. First drive of the game. Back, quick throw, and it's short. Dylan Bell was the intended receiver. And Kirby Smart is keeping the offense on the, on the field. They're going to go for it here, fourth down and five. That ball got tipped as well. That's two passes so far tipped 
that time by Missouri bringing pressure. But I love the aggression here by Kirby that said we have to play aggressive and play smart right out of the gate. It's a long five, free play, throw is there, Thomas the catch at the 20. Great composure by Carson Beck. Offside, defense number five, and the rookies on the snap, and was declined, first down. Missouri is one of the most penalized teams in the league. Here you see Ra Ra Thomas fighting and high pointing that football and ripping it out of the hands of Abrams Drain. That was a free play, and Georgia took advantage of it. Beck is two of five on this drive, but that one obviously a big one. Edwards. And he's got about a yard. This is a good Missouri defense. They're only giving up 338 a game. They're good against the run. They're good against the pass. Very solid. And you see Blake Baker, their second-year defensive coordinator. Baker told us yesterday in our meetings, we got to be aggressive. We got to come after them. Felt like they were too soft, too much, too high shell against LSU and paid the price. They're not going to make that same mistake here today. Kendall Milton back in the game. Tenth play of the drive. Play fake back in trouble. Down he goes. And Missouri gets to him. That's only the seventh sack allowed by this offensive line all year. It's a loss of six. This is a good sign. Here you are coming off this outside edge. And remember, that Xavier Truss, who's really a left guard, who's playing for the injured Amarius Mims, this is a really good sign for a Missouri defense that has gotten 10 sacks in their last two games. Yeah, now 25 on the season. Bell in the ball game and a five receiver look. Another third down. This one, third down at 15. Blitz comes back early. That's Makai Muse with the catch. And he's going to be caught short of the first down at the 15 yard line. This might be decision time again for Georgia. You see Muse there in the slot, just a simple bubble screen. He's so explosive. He's one of the favorite players on this team. Players respect him because he plays much bigger than his diminutive size. Peyton Woodring is a freshman kicker. Got off to a rocky start, but he's hit 10 straight after missing a couple of easy ones. Now this is just a 32-yarder right down the middle. And it is up, and it is good. Georgia moves the ball on their first drive. Missouri forces a field goal, and this SEC East showdown is underway. From all the sports you love, watch CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. Brock Bowers is here, though he's got the uniform on, just like last week in Jacksonville against Florida. The tightrope surgery was successful. They're really encouraged with his progress in the rehab. Rich, you and I were at practice on Thursday, and I would bet my bottom dollar that I saw a number 19 in a black jersey who was going through walkthrough. Certainly, to your point, an encouraging sign for this football program. That one through the end zone. Let's go down below, Amanda Guerra. Hi, Amanda. Hey, Rich, good afternoon to you. You know, this Missouri team off to its best start in a decade. We spoke to head coach Eli Drinkwitz, who admitted the past couple of seasons, his team was very fragile. There were a lot of moving cards, but really they didn't have an identity. Well, this season, they found it. They have a handful of mottos, the main one being STP, something to prove. They also have just us and put it on tape. Basically, it's all the same team, a team with grit that tunes out the noise and proves not to others, but to themselves, they can finish what they start. Hey, Amanda, that noise is deafening right now. Theo Weiss with a catch, and he's going to lose a yard. As we take a look at Missouri's offense, Papa Johns brings it to you. Brady Cook, a St. Louis kid, has made a big leap this year. He's having a great year, but he's had three interceptions in his last three games. This young man's going to need to run today. They're going to need his legs. He's got to extend two to three third down drives and try to escape a Georgia front who's getting better by the week. Missouri's been good on the road, but this is 
this environment is much different than anything they've been in this year. They've suffered from a lot of false start penalties. This noise is not going to help. Cook flushed. He's got speed. And from behind, he's hauled down at the 38-yard line. That's a first down. Jamon Dumas Johnson got him. You're going to see a little move to the inside right there that's going to open up the crease. Great job of Brady Cook using his eyes, then that acceleration to move the sticks. We were just talking about the importance of his legs. We've now seen both quarterbacks who are known for their ability to throw the football, making a difference on the ground. Cody Schrader in the backfield. And a quick throw, that's Luther Burden. And he is a playmaker. Burden with the catch and the run. That's a gain of about seven. Missouri's offense and Schrader running the football important today. Yeah, he's tied for first in the SEC in rush touchdowns and second for rush yards per game. Had a huge game against South Carolina. His ability to run the football with some consistency would really help to take this crowd out of the football game. Second down and three. This is Schrader, who played four years at a Division II school, transferred last year, and as you noted, second in the SEC in Russia. Defensively, great linebackers, including Jamon Dumas Johnson. Yeah, he's fourth on the team in tackles, but more importantly, leads them in sacks for last week as a unit against Florida. Third down short, Schrader breaks a tackle, gets across midfield, and gets the first down. Malachi Starks, the stop for Georgia. Malachi Starks is a tremendously talented player, but look at Schrader. He stays on that track, and that's the power that he runs with, able to run through the arms of Michael Williams, Michael Williams. And now they got a free set of downs. This is a part of the field where Missouri may think about taking a play action shot down the field. Cook sets, fires. That's Schrader out of the backfield. He's a weapon as a receiver as well. That's another seven or eight yard pickup. And this Missouri offense has got rhythm early. Kirby Moore electing to take a deep shot there. He dialed it up, but Georgia covered it really well. And that's what you get from Brady Cook. He checks down and takes some of the free yards. Really enjoyed our conversation with Moore yesterday. He knew that this was going to be a big challenge, but really liked the development of his unit week over week. And he's a brand-new coordinator. It's a big change because Eli Drinkwitz was the coordinator and the head coach. He gave up those duties just to be the head coach. Schrader left side looking for the first down, and he's not going to get it. Warren Brinson made the stop. This is going to be a third down in about two. Missouri likes to run this stretch play, but the ball really surprised Brady Cook, and that's what this noise will do to you. It's really hard to hear when the snap count is, and that's how you can put the football on the ground. Really nice job right there by him of fielding that football and handing it off successfully. Late change by Georgia defensively. Quick snap. And it's Cook straight ahead, puts his shoulder down, gets a help, uh, some help from behind by Brett Norfleet, the tight end. And we'll see where they mark it. He's got the first down. It's a pretty encouraging sign for a Missouri team to be able to convert two third downs on them in a row. And you love the decision to run Beatty Cook here. This is a bulldog defense, Rich, that's the best in the country in third down scenarios. And they've converted two on this drive. And they keep going. And you can see Georgia loves to run linebackers, DPs, linemen in and out. They play about 28, 30 guys on defense. Pump fake, Cook, end zone, caught, touch, touchdown, Luther Burden the third, and Missouri strikes back. It's all of a sudden very quiet between the hedges. Missouri wanted their one-on-one -on -one shots, and they specifically wanted to target Dalen Everett. They're going to take this all day long. They felt they had a mismatch, and they certainly proved to be right on the first touchdown of the game. 
Byrne, a St. Louis kid, one of 19 St. Louis players on this Missouri roster. Tell you what, this drive was a lot of Brady Cook. He was four of four for 53 yards. A couple carries for 17. And he finds Luther Burden in the end zone. An SEC East showdown. And Missouri is on top. Accuracy. And he certainly showed it off there with that touchdown. Missouri to kick off. Harrison Mevis, the thicker kicker, who had the 61-yard field goal to beat Kansas State. And a flag is down. Missouri was offside. Fair catch called for. And it appeared that Missouri was offside. Steve Marlowe, our referee. Offside. Star-studded NWSL semifinals kick off tomorrow, 7 Eastern, over on CBS Sports Network. It all leads up to the championship next Saturday right here on CBS and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. If you're just joining us, Athens, Georgia, home of the Bulldogs, who've won 25 straights are number two in the college football playoff standings, which were announced this week. On a toss, he's on Edwards, Johnny Walker. It's one top. of the storylines for this team all season long is that Georgia's now trailed in five of their last six SEC games. We talked to Kirby Smart about that yesterday. He said it's never easy for us. We're just not that dominant team that we've been in the past. We could have our hands full, but we'll be ready. No gain on the play. Second down and ten. Second possession for Georgia. Carson Beck had a big run. In that first drive, love it in motion. See if they can get him the football. Beck steps up, fires on target. Rosamie Jack Saint with the catch right at midfield for Georgia. Really nice job by Rosamie Jack Saint because this ball was thrown a little bit behind him. Beck's going through his read, but he plucks that ball right out of the air one on one. This was a beautiful job of displaying his ball skills. You talk about spreading it around. 11 different Bulldogs have caught touchdown passes this year. Eight different Bulldogs have rushed for a touchdown. This offense has just like multiple weapons, even without Brock Bowers. Dejon Edwards to midfield, a gain of two. And Dejon Edwards is a player that's finally healthy and a big reason why this Georgia offense has been clicking. He and Kendall Milton had some knee injuries early on. Of course, the offensive line injuries up front and then the wide receiver room with Lad McConkey's lower back and, of course, Brock Bowers. Mike Bobo's had to figure out ways to manufacture offense, and he's certainly done that. Boy, this is more what you want from his style where he's featuring receivers, and McConkey was the beneficiary last week. And he loves play action. Beck, no play action here. Short throw. Oscar Delp, who had a couple catches in that wipeout of the Gators last week, makes the catch just a sophomore. He's still learning the, this offense and learning that role of tight end. They're down three. The command of this offense and the calmness of Beck something that Kirby Smart really emphasized yesterday. Missouri showing blitz. And here they come. Beck gets rid of it, has a man. It's caught there. And it's Lovitz, the former Tiger, to the 35 with a first down. They motion Love it out and put him in the bunch set. And he just squirts out. And Beck puts the ball on him and almost breaks a tackle and takes it to the next level but that's a good job of Missouri getting ball carriers down on the ground right away Georgia cannot get behind them if they want to be successful defending this pass game already six different receivers have catches
Beck fakes the pitch. And hit and dropped again. Second sack already for Missouri. Niles Gaddy, the defensive end, got him. This defensive line is so quick off this outside edge. They're going to stunt themselves inside, and then the pocket just collapses. Beautiful job of redirection right there by Niles Gaddy defeating his block and getting the second sack of the afternoon, which is an encouraging sign if you're Missouri because this Georgia team only gave up six sacks coming into this contest. And Blake Baker, their defensive coordinator, had that at the top of his list yesterday. We must get to Carson Beck. Dejon Edwards. And Edwards inside the 30 three the market at the 32 and rich what's notable about that and i'm sure what blake baker has to feel good about is that those two sacks were one-on-ones yes they were blitzes but the results happened because missouri's defensive line had a one-on-one -on -one situation and got home to the quarterback and that's all you can ask for if you're a defensive lineman give me a shot to win one-on-one -on -one and i'll get there and so far the tigers have just about field goal range here two of four on third down so far for Georgia. It's a third and six. And Edwards has the first down and more. Spins across the 20. Charleston with the stop. First down, Georgia. That's 12 yards. Really nice job on this delay here. Missouri was crowding the line of scrimmage like they were going to blitz and were expecting, but they drop out of there, and it's just a simple draw. Good combination there and a missed tackle on that outside edge. Allowed for Edwards to do what he does best. He's so shifty in, as an inside runner. Vision being the best attribute for a running back because they lead the feet. Final half minute, first quarter. News in motion. This is Milton, and Milton busts his way inside the 10, inside the 8, down to the 7, 12 more yards, and now Georgia is rolling. First quarter in the books, Georgia on the move, Missouri on top, 7-3. Tigers. Coach, you told us the fast start wasn't necessary, but it was preferable. What do you make of your team's performance so far? Yeah, that's a good answer. We got to play better on third down. This is going to be an important red zone series for us right here. You said it was important to get to the quarterback. You've been able to do that with that sack. What else do you want to see from your defense? Well, we're not stopping the run well enough right now. It's creating some manageable down and distance, especially on that last third down. But we'll settle in right here again. This is going to be a big series right here in the goal line. Coach, thank you. MIZ. That was while we were away. Now, start of the second quarter in the red zone. Just inside the eight. That's Clay Vandegrift who had the direct snap. Vandegrift is the backup quarterback. And Carson Beck comes jogging back on after Vandegrift's first carry there. So a little bit of trickery by uh, Mike Bobo. It's one of the things that Georgia likes to do down here. They rely on this big physical offensive line, and you heard Eli Drinkowitz talk about it. That left side of Georgia's big boys up front are getting it done. Three runs of over 10 yards already. An impressive drive here. Beck is five of his last five, has time, fires short. Caught there, that's Ra Ra Thomas. But he is stopped by Chris Abrams' drain right at the five-yard line. This third and goal now. Georgia in the red zone likes those shallow crossing routes right there, but a good job this time in zone coverage by Missouri, keeping everything in front and giving them a chance here on third down. Missouri forced Georgia to kick a field goal on a long drive to start the game. You can see 128 yards of total offense already. Let's see if Baker brings some heat here to try to hurry up this operation. Beck, quick throw, caught. That's love it. That's a touchdown, Georgia. Just a now screen right 
out the outside edge. Watch this block by Delp. Boom, that springs it. And then the big left tackle, Ernest Green, gets up there as well. That's a staple of this offense, and it just hit home. Both offensive coordinators feel pretty good right now. Both defensive coordinators right now are digging deep into the notes. Impressive drive by Carson Beck and Georgia. The former Tiger, Dominic Lovett, and the Bulldogs back on top. Amin Bass Reeves streaming tomorrow exclusively on Paramount Plus. Rich Waltz, Aaron Taylor, Amanda Guerra, 93,000. Sanford Stadium. The shadows starting to creep in. The weather today much warmer than the last two days. Temperatures in the mid 70s. Through the end zone it goes. Off to New York we go. Adam Zucker in our New York studio for a cheap update. Adam? All right, Rich. It's the final chapter of Bedlam, at least for now. And this is Sooners freshman Gavin Sawchuk. Best game so far this year, 63 yards. He gets 64 to tie things up in Stillwater. But Oklahoma State just scored moments ago to make it 13-7. These two part of that five-way tie atop the Big 12, guys. I'm going to be sad if that's the end of Bedlam. That's sad. Here, both offenses have been great. Brady Cook, the Missouri quarterback, was 4 of 4 for 53 yards and had a couple of big runs on their first long touchdown drive. He's throwing here. He almost escapes. He's going to get about a yard, but he's dangerous. Jalen Walker tripped him up. This is a defensive line that knows how to get after it. you got to stay alive. When you're on the outside edge, like we saw Jalen Walker there, you have to retrace your steps. He had a sack last week. It was his only tackle of the game, but he's one of those young players that Glenn Schumann is really excited about. This defense is known for relentless pursuit at all levels. Four-man rush. Cook steps up, fires down the sideline. Battle there, and it's caught. That's Theo Weiss Jr., the transfer from Oklahoma. There's some bedlam for you. Weiss has had a career-high five touchdowns this year, but both of these teams creating some one-on-one -on -one opportunities out on the outside edge. It's just a back shoulder throw. It's not a clear, clean catch, but he certainly brought it down, and I think they're going to want to take a look at it because Weiss bobbled it. Oh, snap. The play was initiated. Pulling on the field is a catch. Under 33 yards pending review. Whoa. Whoa. Doesn't look like he stuck that catch at all, and the ball is moving around considerably. And remember, Rich, the ball can move, but Weiss needs to demonstrate that he's got sure and control of that football and I just don't know if he does there that bobble might have cost them a, a really big play because it's still moving around it's away from his body right there now he brings it back in but almost looks simultaneous as his backside hits out of bounds so the backside in your opinion is out of bounds we bring in Gene Sterator he's had a couple looks at it Gene what do you think yeah, I'm with Aaron on this one too, Rich. Yeah, look, it, it, the ball can move, but he has to possess that ball on the front end. This is not a clean possession right away, so now we've got to go through that step. At this point, I think he does just possess it, but I agree with Aaron as well. I think the first body part to touch once there's secure possession is the backside because, boy, if that right heel could be on the ground as well. Ah, not enough. I don't think they could tell where that yeah. left side landed, Gene. It's really close, and right at the end on the last replay, I saw that back right heel, which also was on the ground, and I think the heel may have been down right prior to the backside landing. If you watch real slow, right here, you see the back heel still on the ground when there was possession, and all you need is a frame there, guys, as well. So call stands means not enough to overturn and not enough to confirm. It's a huge play and a huge call. 
Tigers from the Georgia 41. Cook again fires incomplete. That was behind Luther Burden. And that's his first incompletion. Yeah, there was some late pressure in the face there. Georgia is known for doing what's called green dog blitzes. If they're in man coverage and the back doesn't rush, boom, you can trigger from that second level. And that's exactly what Smile Munden did there. And that's what caused the errant throw. Georgia's good at getting to the quarterback. They sacked Florida four times last week. Their pass rush has been getting better as the season's gone along. Second and ten. Cook fires sideline back shoulder and he misses Weiss. Third down and ten. I would have liked to have seen a run there. That's typically the call first and ten after an incompletion to give yourself a makeable third down. Third and forever is not where you want to live against this defense. This is Schrader, right side, hit and dropped. Jamon Dubas Johnson. And it's fourth down and ten. This is going to be at the top end of Harris Nevis's leg range here. If they're going to elect to kick a field goal, they checked out of this. They didn't like what they saw initially, but I'm not sure that a stretch play into the boundary on third and ten was the best play call there. Luke Bauer is going to come on. Mevis does have that 61 yarder. But that was at the end of the game. <laughs> and, that was, and it was going to be a 56 yarder. Remember, there was a, a delay of game that pushed him back. That won the game against Kansas State. This is Bauer, who helped win the game against Kentucky with a fake punt pass. And a good punt there. Down inside the 10. Fun start here. 10 7. Number two, Georgia. Is due, and he landed with, of all places, Georgia. No bad blood, though, between him and his former team on the other sideline there. You see him saying hi to some of his former coaches. But we do want to mention what he left behind at Missouri was a lot of opportunity, specifically for two guys in particular. And you have seen them this game. Wide receivers Luther Burden in Oklahoma transfer. Theo Weiss. Burden sliding into Lovett's spot. He had the touchdown already in this game. Now second in the SEC in receiving yards. And they say Theo Weiss coming into the system has been absolutely massive. Even as a transfer, he's turned into one of the biggest leaders on this team. All right, thank you, Amanda. Georgia backed up inside the 10. Beck rolling right, firing on the run. It's low. McConkey bobbled it. Did he hang on? Yes, he did. What a catch by Lad McConkey. An incredible job of concentration on a ball that wasn't thrown particularly well. And once again, Bobo, after a big play, is hitting the gas pedal. Blitz comes. Beck with time. Fires. Sideline. Contact. Ra Ra Thomas was locked up with Ennis Rakestraw, but no flag. Rakestraw's a really big physical player, but McConkey. Look at that concentration. We've seen both of these receiver groups bobble these balls around. Williams was almost able to get there and knock it free, but a really nice job of securing that one by 84. This feels like an enormous situation for the Missouri defense. They've got to find a way to get a stop here. They cannot allow Georgia to put together another long drive, Rich. Their first two drives scored points were 12 plays apiece. They have to do something to get this ball back for their offense and have some success on that side of the ball. Trevez Johnson making the stop there. Blake Baker, the defensive coordinator. With the loss of Bowers, McConkey has kind of become the favorite target of Beck. At least it seemed that way against Florida. And it looks that way here. It's a really good opportunity. He told us that Missouri brings seven when they blitz more than anybody in the country. They'd love to get some pressure here. Possibly a sack and get Beck on the ground. Third and 11. McConkey. But short of the first down. Rake straw there with the hit right at the 35. And it's fourth down and three. That was a really nice job of tackling right off the outside edge. You can see as soon as he gets this football, boom. 
They dislodge and circle to the football. Jalen Carlisle was also there on that tackle, and that's the stop that Missouri needed. So Brett Thorson, who has not had a punt returned all year, that's amazing, is punting to Luther Burden. That's a high kick. Fair catch called for. And Burden makes the catch inside the 20, 45-yard punt. Missouri gets the defensive stop, gets the football down. Defense getting themselves off the field. They were a little sluggish getting their entire punt return team back onto the field when they needed it. That could be something that upstairs Georgia can take advantage of. Now remember, Missouri was able to run a fake punt against Kentucky earlier in the season. That just wasn't a smooth operation there to end that series of plays. Flag down. Ball start. Offense on the 72. Five-yard penalty. First down. Georgia is really good at late movement and a shift by their defensive line, and that's drawn a lot of flags across the SEC. It's called stemming. Keep a look at that defensive line. It's that late movement. It's really hard for an offensive lineman, particularly on the road with all of this crowd noise, to not move and react to what Georgia's defensive line did right there. Crowd has been up all game. Cook tucks it, gets to the outside. Now, Rich, it's interesting. We've seen a lot of success from Georgia over the year, but this is what they do. They move late, and they move from odd to even, even to odd, and it makes identification and the blocking rules really difficult. You can see the frustration that it has, whether at home or on the road, but especially here in Sanford. It's a beast if you're an offensive lineman to try to sort that out. Some coaches have complained, opponent coaches, that that's – against the spirit of the rule and should be illegal the old disconcerting signals when they clap their hands yes but just moving no you got to be able to figure out and have an answer for it second and 13 this could be a timeout by missouri man is it loud in here man is it fun in here 10 7 seen on the same week they're all on CBS, too. That's a special bonus question. It's been a while. I'm going back to the Gary Pinkle era of at, Missouri. At least, for sure. Early 90s. Second and 13. That was Georgia's first tackle for loss of this ball game. Missouri's defense has had three. Now the Tigers have to figure out a way to work uphill here and keep this drive going. Cook. Time has a man. It's burden and it's broken up and the flag comes down right at midfield. Julian Humphrey had help on the coverage. He's taking their one-on-one -on -one shots. Humphrey's in coverage. He's beat and he slows down. I, I didn't see a whole lot of contact there. If anything, it's Burden pushing off a little bit. The flag should have been on him. He was more aggressive there with his hands. Let's going to see what these officials are discussing here. Pass interference. Defense number 12. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. The arm across the face mask might be what drew the flag here. They've been letting these wide receivers and DBs play pretty aggressively. Well, let's get Gene's opinion on this. He gets paid for it. He's worn the Thanks, stripes. Rich. Listen, <laughs> you know, in my opinion, guys, look, there are some indicators there, right? He's not playing the ball. He's chasing the receiver. Contact at that point, you would want to throw a pass interference. But to me, that defensive back. All star. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. That's down. I felt that the defensive back in that case guys pulled back enough and really didn't do much to separate or significantly hinder the receiver at all. I thought a no call would have been the best decision on the play. Hey Gene, we just saw another flag on Missouri for the defensive line moving. Are you cool with that? Because some coaches really complain about it. So long as they're stemming and not simulating something that would be disconcerting and it's a regular football move, they're okay with it. 
and they do do it frequently, Rich, so it's, it's pretty standard in that regard. But if they think that movement is abrupt or the intent is to just draw the offense off, it's a judgment by the officials. That, to me, and what we're showing on replay there, that looks like a normal stem. You've just got to stay in that spot as an offensive lineman and understand that. All right, excellent stuff, G. Thank you. Stimmick's been around forever, but George has taken it to another level. And what makes it even more complicated is that you go from an odd look with three down linemen sometimes to four down linemen, which makes you completely change your blocking rules up front, and you just don't have enough time to do it. Blitz comes, Cook's in trouble. Flushed, rolling, looking, keeping, and skips on his way all the way up to midfield. He kind of hesitated, like, yeah, I'm going to go out of bounds, and then accelerated for a few more yards. Rich, we talked at the top of the show about what the keys to the game were going to be for Missouri, and one of those is getting Brady Cook's legs involved to extend drives, and he's their leading rusher by far so far today. 39 rush yards on the ground. They got to find a way to get Schrader going as well. It was 19 yards. Yards, the ball just inside Georgia territory. This is Schrader. And he's to the 45. He's such a unique story. Truman State is a Division II school. He played there for four years. A booster at a cocktail party told Eli Drinkwitz, hey, you know, there's this guy that, that really would like to walk on and transfer. Will you take him? And Eli said, yeah, okay, you can come out. Well, he's second in the SEC in Russia. That's a pretty productive cocktail party. Trader right side this time. Georgia gets to him at the 42. Let's check in with Amanda. Rich, talking about Cody Schrader, his coaches will tell you no one will outwork him. And the perfect example of that, last December before their bowl game, he had an excused absence from practice because he was graduating. Later that night, Coach Drinkwitz was at a team facility. He noticed someone on the field in full pads in the dark in 20-degree weather. It was Schrader. He asked his staff member for a script of the plays they ran that day, not wanting to miss a single thing. That's that sums it up. That's how you go from walk on to second the SEC in rushing. Let's see what the script says on third down and two. Schrader straight ahead. He's powerful. 5'9, 215. He's got four yards and the first down. This is going to be split flow zone where they bring the tight end across the formation. The true freshman, Brett Norfleet, who gets the kick out right there. And then it's going to be the power of Schrader, that contact power running behind his pads, gets the necessary yardage to move the sticks. They're getting closer to Harrison Mevis territory. And that was important because that was in the same no man's land where Missouri elected to punt earlier. This gives them a chance at points here. All on the ground in this drive. They'll stay on the ground. And this is Cook breaking loose to the 20. And he dives inside to the 18-yard line. Jamon Dumas Johnson in pursuits. Well, this is a simulated pressure in the sense that it looks like everybody's up there, but they only rush four. And when the other linebackers bail out of there, it's the parting of the Red Sea. And Cook very smartly takes advantage of it again. If you're Georgia, you have to spy somebody to keep an eye on Cook or make sure your defensive line stay in their rush lanes. Well done with the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Pete in the backfield. And Pete with the handoff trying to get outside. The mesh with Cook wasn't clean. And Michael Williams ran him down. There was some indecision there. You almost wondered Brady Cook was thinking about keeping this and trying to outrun that defensive end and elected to let it go at the very last minute. A turnover down here in this area of the field could be absolutely catastrophic. Feel like Missouri got a little lucky there. Kirby Moore, first year offensive coordinator, he was the offensive coordinator for Jeff Tedford at Fresno State last year. His older brother Kellen Moore, of course, great quarterback at Boise State. Kirby was a wide receiver with him. Second down, 10. Cook firing. Enzo Burden almost had it just out of his hands. Javon Bullard on the coverage. 
Javon Bullard along with Tyke Smith and Malachi Starks are such impressive playmakers. That would have been an incredible catch by Burden. Bullard was in his hip pocket in phase the whole time. And this is not good. Not good at all. He is such a weapon. 61 catches, 113 yards a game out of East St. Louis High School. A step away. Missouri on the move down now. Here's a look. It's hard to see exactly what happened and the way that he went down. But he goes to get up right there and you'll see immediately grabs that left ankle. I have a man to keep an eye on that. That would be a huge story. Third down and 11. Back. Without their slot receiver burden, Georgia's defense, the best third down defense in the country. Cook, pressured, scrambling, fires, corner, and it's incomplete. Daniel Blood, who came in for burden, the intended receiver, and Harrison Mevis is on for a field goal attempt. Great job. There was pressure from the back side. You see on the right side of your screen, boom. Just getting around that edge was Damon Wilson, number 35, and then Kamari Lassiter did the rest with really tight coverage, and now the thicker kicker is out here to do his thing. 5'11", 243, Warsaw, Indiana. He had that heroic 61-yard attempt, but he's had some issues this year as well. He's 13 of 19 on the season. That kick is true. And this game is tied. 4-14 left, first half. Number 12, Missouri. Number two, Georgia. 10 apiece. Missouri right now, 10-10 on the road. Georgia at home is great. I mean, they have a home winning streak. They have a SEC winning streak, and they've won 25 straight games. They're a long ways away from the NCAA record for winning streaks, though. That's Oklahoma back in 1953 through 57. 47 wins for the Sooners. That's the all-time record. This is Muse. And Muse gets out to the 27, and we check in with Amanda Guerra. Bridget, update for you on Missouri wide receiver Luther Burden. The team tells me that injury, he's just going to try to walk it off right now. They pulled up the injury tent. He refused to go in. Hasn't even really met with the trainers, just walking along the sideline here. He sat down with the other wide receivers. Obviously, we're close to half, so we might get a better update for you on exactly what that injury is, if he's going to continue to play after half. All right, thank you, Amanda. So valuable in that slot. He's been the the big weapon for Missouri this year. Carson Beck. He's hit Dominic Lovett for a touchdown pass. Little toss to Dejon Edwards. And Missouri's defense has defended the run pretty well here. Marvin Burks Jr. made the stop. Yeah, they were in cover three there, and the corners came up and triggered right away. Georgia was trying to run the football into the boundary, and it's another tackle for loss. That's really good by this Missouri front. If they can get Georgia behind the sticks, four and counting. Second down, 12. Back in the pocket. Time over the middle. Broken up. Abrams drained. Ra-Ra Thomas, the intended receiver, and Abrams Drain got the left hand up and on the ball. Yeah, he's in off coverage, and he's got his eyes on the quarterback, so he knows when the ball is up in the air, and then he just at the last minute uses his speed to get that big left hand on the football. Maybe a little bit of a hug by that right shoulder, not much. But again, these officials letting some contact go on down the field. As long as you keep it fair and balanced, I'm all for it. It's another long third down for Georgia. They're four of seven on third down. Play clock down. Beck gets it off. 
Missouri blitzes. Beck with time for McConkey and it's incomplete. Lad McConkey, and again it was Chris Abrams' drain. He's playing at such a high level right now. He was on the coverage. Keep your eye on Darius Robinson. Just simply beats his man one on one and gets another hit on Carson Beck. Again, coming into this game, not much pressure on Beck. He's been a cool customer back there, but remember, Rich, Baker told us that they felt with under pressure that Beck would kind of panic a little bit and get a little nervous, and they're certainly getting themselves home. Abrams train, fair catch called for at the 29. Let's bring back the duck, shall we? That's an awful close to Ugga's house there, by the way, for the duck. <laughs> Georgia, Missouri, Alabama, LSU. Last time in the same week, top 15. And I was right, Gary Pinkle era for Missouri. October 13th, 2013. Missouri, when they joined the SEC, had a nice arrival, didn't they? Yeah, they won the East two years in a row, and it was behind really good quarterback play and some outstanding efforts on the defensive line, particularly at defensive end, and they're following that same recipe here early on in this first half. This is Cook with burden back in the game and the receivers got crossed cooks ball sails out let's go back this is the only win in this matchup back in 2013 james franklin got hurt had to leave the game matty mock came in at quarterback missouri broke out a trick play but sasser hit with damian washington for 40 and the tigers won 41 26. that's their only win against georgia Georgia here with two high safeties. They've been playing a lot of two-man with the spy on Cook to make sure that he can't run away and hurt him with his legs. Second down and 10. Down he goes. Georgia gets to him. Zion Logue, the junior. First sack for Georgia. Keep your eye right here. He's going to get double teamed initially, but he's going to be able to split it. You see Cook tries to break away there, but he stays home in his gap. He cancels it, and Georgia gets its first sack of the afternoon. It's a long third down. Luther Burden has been in for this series, so he has walked it off. Play clock is down. Cook took, trying to get everybody organized. Yeah, they took Dalen Everett out and brought Tyke Smith in here. Little draw play there, and Schrader's going to get maybe five to the 30, and that's some room for their punter, Luke Bauer. That's right. Timeout on the field. Fourth and nine, Missouri punting in a 10-10 game late in the second quarter. Early November afternoon in Athens, Georgia. 10-10, number 12, Missouri, number two, Georgia. And of course, those are college football playoff rankings. Georgia was number one in the AP poll, but now we shift to the college football playoff standards. It's a high, high punt by Luke Bauer. Fair catch called for, and Makai Muse makes it. Coming up, got go halftime report. Adam Rick, BJ. Look ahead to the final game of our triple header. It's a pretty darn good one. You got LSU and Alabama. And they'll bring you all the highlights from today and these first half highlights as well. That's the Geico halftime report. Aaron, your Heisman leader. Yeah, Bo Nix is doing a great job out there on the West Coast and kind of taking over for Michael Penix, whose offense has struggled the last couple weeks. Marvin Harrison has been uncoverable all season long, and Jaden Daniels, who we'll see later tonight on the road against Alabama, is having an outstanding season. Georgia used a timeout to keep some time, and here we get them see uh, get to see them with some two-minute offense with two minutes left and two timeouts left. They haven't found themselves in this position quite often, and we talked about how good Edwards' eyes are, but there's an opportunity there to break it out to the left side by Kendall Milton, and he might have missed it. 
That's what you get when you get a backup. Milton's been a guy who's a good player, just hadn't been able to stay healthy. Clock's under two minutes. This is Milton left side. Boys, he blasted right at the 35. Gain of one. Joseph Charleston and Chuck Hicks. The stop for Missouri, and the clock is under 130. Really interesting play calling here. You use your timeout to preserve the clock and start this drive with two runs right up the middle. Yeah, now Missouri might think about using one of their two timeouts left on third and four if Georgia does not get a first down. I'm talking to Carson Beck about his ability to milk the clock at the end. The crowd. That game against Florida. The crowd right now is uh, not happy that Georgia's running some clock here before this third down play. Imagine this would be a shot here, or possibly a screen. Got to get to the 40 for a first down. Beck is back. There's the quick throw, and it's incomplete. I'm not sure Lovett ever saw it, and they don't need to call a timeout because it's an incompletion. Run, run, and then a quick slant that was off target. This is a Georgia offense that, with some pressure in his face, Carson Beck seeming uneasy in that pocket, something we haven't seen for the last couple of weeks, but this is as bad as I've seen Georgia's offensive line pass block this entire season. Yeah, six sacks. And just uh, in the eight games coming in, two sacks here. And Beck has been hit a couple times. Flag down. Fair catch called for by Abrams Drain. That's all the way back at the 18-yard line. The flag sits at the line of scrimmage, 44-yard punt. Kirby Smart watching anxiously. It's procedure. Kirby Smart, one of the least penalized teams. Illegal formation. Picking team. Five players lined up in the backfield. Five-yard penalty will be assessed at the end of the kick. First down. So here's Missouri now with two timeouts left, 45 seconds left. Although Georgia's defense in the second quarter started to look a lot like Georgia's defense last week against Florida and good to see Luther Burton who's back out here on the field if you're a Tigers fan this is exactly what you want where Missouri's been successful Rich is big plays taking shots down the field that's certainly going to show up here sooner rather than later Cook started five for five he's all five since Schrader bounces outside races for the sideline gets captured and dropped he did not get out before he was stopped, so the clock continues to roll. Another interesting play call here for Missouri. Remember, they received the ball to start the second half, and you see Drinkwitz is not happy. He felt that Schrader got out of bounds and was moving forward, and I agree with him. Second and nine, but they lost some time there. Schrader with the catch. Did he get out here? He did. He doesn't have a first down, but man, that's a costly, costly uh, 20 seconds that came off the clock. They thought he was out of bounds. The official clearly did not. He kept the wind, the clock motion going, and Missouri didn't catch it. Drinkwitz is clearly upset, and he should be. Now remember, if you run out of bounds or going backwards, yes, the clock will continue to go. But if you're moving forward, as Schrader was there, that clock should have stopped. It was third and five. It's a sucker on the ground. Yeah, they'll keep it with Schrader. Let's take a look and see, as the tackle happened, if he was on his way out. Ah, oh, that's that's really close, right? I mean, his forward progress has stopped while he's inbounds and then out of bounds. That's closer than we thought. Timeout here, seven seconds left, first half. There right left. So good. Do you really want to go through with this? Absolutely. You've always stood up for what you believed in, but this? What could mean more than this? So, Mom, what do you think?
Take the Marco's Pepperoni Magnifico with classic and old world pepperoni. Add the sweet heat of Mike's Hot Honey and you get Marco's Irresistible New Hot Honey Magnifico. A delicious combo of sizzle and drizzle. Try it for only $10.99. Here for a limited time. May the weather be cold and your tub be hot. May your hard seltzer be as bubbly as jet setting number seven. And may the real vodka and real juice be paired with real good company. I knew. Sun's up. 10 10 here. Gene Steratore joins us. Gene, that's a tough call for an official, right? Was he out of bounds? Was his it's a, forward progress stopped? Yeah, it really is, Ritz. But remember now, look, the forearm or the elbow, something like that, puts you down as a body part, too. I've looked at this while we were at break, and that right forearm is down inbounds prior to his body landing out. It's a couple frames, but that forearm is down inbounds. That official did the right thing by winding the clock there, guys. All right, good stuff. Thank you, Gene. Not much clock left here. Seven seconds. Luke Bauer, the punter. Georgia comes after it. And Bauer gets it away. And the half is going to end with a football rolling at the Georgia 37 yard line. This is number two, Georgia, and number 12, Missouri. Georgia has won 25 straight at home. And the Tigers, Missouri, number two, Georgia. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Taylor. Amanda Guerra will join us shortly. We talked to all about the offenses to start the game, and the defenses were the ones that shined, especially in the second quarter. Well, Rich, we talked before the game that this game was going to go one of two ways. Georgia was either going to run away with it or it was going to be a low-scoring defensive contest, and that's exactly what we've got. Ready for the kick. Missouri gets the ball to start this second half. This is Marquise Johnson who stops at the 17. First half game trends. What have you seen? Well, I saw a lot of Missouri's defense getting after folks and winning at the line of scrimmage. But Brady Cook been okay through the air, hits a couple deep shots, but his legs have been a big factor. Georgia has to figure that out. Dominic Lovett had that six yard receiving touchdown versus his former team, but that passing game hasn't been quite what Georgia was hoping and expecting it to be. And finally, third down's been a real differentiator. Georgia struggling to run the ball on first down. It's created some third and longs. They've got to get that solved. Luther Burden, the third, who went out with an ankle injury, came back, was out to start the second half for Missouri. That's him in motion. Play action, Brady Cook fires to the sideline. Wide open there is Wiest, makes the catch out near midfield. They mark him out at the 48-yard line of Missouri. Just a nice job pushing off the line of scrimmage by Theo Weiss and completely turns around Dalen Everett. That's a great first play and a good sign for Missouri who wanted to attack the secondary. This is Schrader and Schrader gets inside Georgia territory down to the 44. We check in with Amanda. Rich Kirby Savard told us the more disciplined team would be the one to win this game. And so far, he's actually pleased with Georgia's discipline in this. He says we're running the game plan we want. What he's not pleased with is that offensive line that you've been talking about. As far as Missouri, Eli Drinkwin said, look, we're playing the champs. We know we're going to have to have a better second half than we did a first one. His key, run the ball. You see Luther Burton back in this game. He told me never count out Luther. Yeah, and Amanda, you saw Cody Schrader with a couple of nice runs. Just like Eli Drinkwitz wanted to pick up a first down. On the move is Missouri. First possession, second half. Brady Cook audibling here. Play change that can make communication hard here on the road with crowd noise, but they get it off. Blitz comes, has time, man open. That's Cooper. Mookie Cooper to the 20, and Mookie Cooper is down to the 18. And Missouri, just like that, is in the red zone. 21 more yards. Mookie Cooper's lined up at the one, number one receiver on the outside, and Missouri doing a good job of using tempo to their advantage here until that. Not a smooth operation. Nope. And right in front of that student All section. Far. Offense, multiple players, five-yard penalty, first down. That's a real deal. It's the fourth penalty. And, and they've all been either offsides or 
false starts of some sort, and that's what you get here on the road. But that makes a tough job even tougher down here. But Missouri is a team that is really good in the red zone. Georgia just simply hasn't let people down there, but when they do, they've had success. This is a really interesting matchup here, strength on weakness. That looked like movement again. Sure no flag. Schrader breaks a tackle, and Schrader is back to the 15-yard line. Smile Munden made the stop. Really nice job moving late with the stem there by Georgia. I agree with you, Rich. Looking at it live, it looked like Missouri moved, but maybe it was the movement of Georgia because none of their defensive linemen had their hands set. Missouri timed that snap beautifully. He was able to pick up some yards on the Bulldogs. Missouri is the best team in the country in the red zone. Cook, lots of time, sidearm throw. And disengaged from the ball was Mookie Cooper on a big hit by C.J. Allen. Norfleet was able to get himself open. You're going to see him run the DB who falls down there. Javon Bullard, had he had a little bit more time, Norfleet, the freshman, was wide open in the end zone. Missouri does not throw to their tight ends that often, though Norfleet has been getting a little more looks and targets. In the last two games, Weiss in motion. Big third down and seven. Blitz comes. Everybody comes. Down he goes. Ty Key Smith. Here's Ty Key Smith off that outside edge. There's nobody. Good blocks from Schrader goes over to the left. He comes from the field, and Cook has no idea he's coming. And when the dogs needed it most, they dialed up some pressure, and Glenn Schumann's unit gets home. Harrison Mevis now. 42 yards. If he hits it, he becomes the all-time leading scorer in Missouri history. Kick is up, and Mevis knocks it through. Missouri has the lead. A record-setting kick and an early third-quarter lead for Eli Drinkwitz and the Tigers. Free opening drive, third quarter, three points on the board and the lead. And now it's time to do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Well, Georgia's been smart to bring second-level pressure. You're going to see Schrader come over here, who's going to block here. But what that does is it leaves Tyke Smith wide open off this outside edge. Brady Cook doesn't even see him coming, and they dialed up a smart blitz to get home for their second sack of the day. That's now six sacks in the last two games for this Bulldog defense that was dead last in the SEC a couple weeks ago. Dylan Bell, Makai Muse deep for Georgia. This is Bell. The wide receiver has been getting time at running back, and he has a nice return up the sideline, across the 30-yard line, and knocked out of bounds at the 35. On Tuesday, November 14th, the NCIS franchise is going down under for the very first time. Two teams of highly trained misfits will come together to defuse naval crimes in the most contested patch of ocean on the planet. NCIS Sydney, new series, Tuesday, November 14th, CBS. Georgia fans, a little bit uneasy here. Now, look, Georgia has been behind in four of their five SEC games, and they've won them all. They have. They've stayed calm. They're going to have to do that. Their offensive line is going to have to give them a chance, particularly on early downs, running the ball in third down when they throw it. Back on play action. Little dump off. Caught there by Edwards. Stumbles. Back on his feet. Still on his feet. And has a really nice gain all the way into Missouri territory. Dejon Edwards, the sophomore. This is what Georgia's threat of the run game will do. They run a play action there. They pull the backside guard, and Dejon Edwards kind of tucks up there like he's going to run, and he becomes an outlet. And now the dogs are on the march. One thing I think Georgia can depend on is their quarterback, Carson Beck, is not going to panic. That's the, the thing that Kirby Smart and Mike Bobo talked a lot about yesterday is his composure and steadiness. I will say this, though. Missouri has rattled him, Rich. He was 
missed four of his last five throws in the first half, and he had some errant throws. We talked about him at the beginning of the game of possibly setting the all-time completion percentage record at 73% if he could maintain that. But Missouri's gotten him off of his game, and I think it's rattled him a little bit. He's 11 of 18, 138 yards. Had that touchdown, and a flag comes from the very back of the play. Play of game. Defense number eight. Just concerning six, five yard penalty. That's Second down. Leading tackler, Tyron Hopper. Right, who so got the penalty that yeah. the opponents of Georgia wanted to be able to do. And when you clap your hands like that, here he is over here. It's the hand clap that's also the signal for the quarterbacks that drew that flag. You watch when Georgia does it. They don't clap their hands. They use their voice. And that's not easy to do when the crowd's into it. 33-yard line of Missouri. Back. Hit again and dropped again. Tyron Hopper. Man, we just saw Georgia get after the quarterback. Here's Harper right here. Hopper right here. It's going to be play action, and he boots out, and boom, he triggers because it was a great job on the outside edge by Johnny Walker setting that edge that forced Beck back up inside, and Hopper got home. Third sack, loss of six. Third down, seven. Back this time, short throw, defended well on the corner, and a flag down. Wow, Ra Ra Thomas called for it, and they got it. And Drinkwitz is not happy. That's on Dre Norwood. Drinkwitz not feeling Passing like these air. calls are fair. Well, ball replaced the spot of the foul with an automatic first down. Another look. This seemed to be an errant throw off the gate. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's all over him there. He can maybe get away with one of those early, but that was just too much contact there. That's a good flag. Good break for Georgia. They got to take advantage of it. Beck McConkey on the edge. Escapes a tackle. McConkey to the 20. And inside the 15. Hopper ran him down. Lad McConkey, 16 yards. That was Trevez Johnson out in the flat right here. Just terrible tackling technique. And McConkey with the beautiful spin move. His back ain't hurting him at all. He was a factor last week and has been a big playmaker here this afternoon. That's the sort of playmaking they needed and the very thing the Tigers told us they couldn't do. Now Georgia in the red zone. Delp in motion. Little flip. This is Milton outside and nothing there. Lad McConkey. He's been throwing with Carson Beck for four years now. They are really on the same page. Yeah, he missed his first four games, though, because of a back injury, one of the many that this offense has had. But against Florida, he exploded six catches, 135 yards, the second 100-yard game of his career. With Brock Bowers out, they dial up 84 when they need to play in the red zone and on third down. Gain of one, second and nine. Bell in motion. This is Milton. This is a touchdown, Georgia. talked about that vaunted Georgia running game. Missouri blocks themselves right there, and Milton just takes advantage of it. Seemed like the secondary got their eyes frozen when Dylan Bell motioned out of the backfield to go left. They zigged, Georgia zagged, and scored a tug. 65 yards on six plays. Extra point is good. 
Missouri first drive got three. Georgia's first drive of the second half, they get seven. And number two, Georgia, back on top. CC on CBS is sponsored by Papa John's. AT&T. Nissan. And by Google Pixel. What a great run by Gary Pinkle as the head coach at Missouri, 2001 to 2015. Most wins all time at Missouri for a head coach. And he made sure that Missouri, when they entered the SEC, entered with success. Yeah, back-to-back -back SECs, championships, and trips to Atlanta. Those two trips didn't end the way that they wanted to, but Eli Drinkwitz, with his best team here, certainly would like to get back there. And if that's going to be the case, they got to get some something going here and answer this call. Well, that's a late Bad turn. decision there. A decision. Flag is down, and so is Marquise Johnson. He may have lost track where he was when he caught the ball. He kind of reluctantly started the return, and he got nailed at the five. The flag is up the field at the 30-yard line. The play there by Cole Spear on the special teams. During the return, holding number 22 receiving team. The to the goal. First down. That's a double whammy there. Two mistakes on the same play. And we knew coming into this game, Rich, that penalties were a big strength on weakness disadvantage for Missouri. And boy, that is holding true here in the second half. At a time when Missouri needed to play smart and get themselves a chance to answer the bell, they made two costly errors here and have their backs against the wall. Crowd comes to life. Just inside the three. Schrader breaks loose. And he's out across the 10. And that's breathing room with an eight yard run. Julian Humphrey made the stop. This is just split flow zone. You bring your tight end across to kick out Tyke Smith right there. Just a nice job of Cody Schrader getting to that second level of the defense to give themselves some breathing room. That was a crucial first down play by the Tigers there. And you see Schrader 61 yards now. A little confusion by Georgia. Schrader again, and he's got the first down. This guy is absolutely nails. I mean, he's tough. 5'9", 215. And that's how he got here, right? And that's how he, he was the sixth running back on the depth chart and hardly got any reps last year until the game started and he started to play more and more. If he's one of those players that runs physically and as the game goes on seemingly gets stronger. And that's been the case here early. Play action. Cook fires sideline. No one's home and it's incomplete. Theo Weiss was running up the field. Luther Burden was near the sideline. They were trying to run Cody Schrader on a wheel route out of the backfield, but Georgia defended it really well and Cook smartly threw that ball away. Remember, Eli Drinkwitz was the head coach and the offensive coordinator until this year. Gave it over to the new offensive coordinator, Kirby Moore. And the offense has been singing all year long. Schrader again left side. Breaks a tackle, stays on his feet. And it comes down just short of the 24. He's shy of the first down by about two. Well, as much as Georgia runs the stretch play, you can't get yourself blocked here on the play side. You see Munden there blocks himself, and Dumas Johnson has to come over, but not after a nice game to make a makeable third down here. Kirby Moore really relying on that stretch play, and it's been effective here in the third quarter. Third down three. Three of eight is Missouri on third down. Schrader still in there. Quick to throw. A little slant. It's broken up. No flags. Julian Humphrey for Georgia. This is just a really nice job of technique by Julian Humphrey. His heels are in the ground. He sees it coming right away, and he's right in phase. 
and is able to knock this ball away. There's certainly some contact there, but as close as the line of scrimmage you were, that's just a good play on the ball, and that's the secondary that Bulldogs fans have come to be accustomed to. Now their offense gets the ball back with pretty good field position. Kai Muse, who was also a walk-on and had to earn a spot from the scout team, is back for Georgia. And this is Muse backing up, avoids a tackle. He is strong and fast, and he gets out to the 34. Georgia's defense, one of the best in the country. Relentless pursuit, great communication. And it's set. Georgia, number two in the college football playoff rankings. Missouri is number 12. An enormous game in the SEC East. Georgia has the ball, and it feels like a little bit of momentum with a four-point lead. Conky in motion. Back on first and ten. That's Edwards. And he's across the 40. And Joseph Charleston made the stop. Missouri had a run blitz on. They're going to bring their linebacker over on this side, which clears out the hole. And just a tremendous block by Cedric Van Pran, the blocking man up front there, number 63. An excellent job of the first down gains with runs that really were problematic for the Bulldogs in the first half. Edwards, nine carries, 32 yards. McConkey again on the move. Edwards again with the carry. And it's going to bring up a third down and short. Let's check in with Amanda. Well, Rich, coming into this game, the last time the Bulldogs lost at home was 2019 to South Carolina. That means they've had now 25 wins at home straight in a row. Head coach Kirby Smart says they have a sign they see daily that says defend your turf. The way he translates that, you better not lose at home if you want to do something special. Since Georgia lost at home, 2019, they have won two national championships. We have seen two U.S. presidents. And because I know everyone in home wants to know this i hear the groans taylor swift has released eight albums <laughs> uh, well done third down three beck steps into the pocket he's gonna run for it and he's got it not by much hopper caught him and beck has 6 4 2 20 out of jacksonville has the first down what's on the line for georgia control of the sec east they've won 25 straight the home win streak we talked about, 35 straight regular season wins. In the 25-game win streak, the two closest calls came in the semifinal of the college football playoff to Ohio State. They won by one, and last year at Missouri, a four-point win. And by the way, they're 41-1 and one in their last 42 games, if that's not enough for you. Milton with the carry, and he's hit right at the 45. That's a gain of one. Hey, listen, it's been a tremendous run for this Georgia team, and they've dominated their opponents over these last couple years, but this is a team that's built differently. A lot of injuries, a lot of young players, a lot of talent on the next level heading off to the NFL in last year's draft. Yet Kirby Smart says the mission is the same. Be 1-0 every week, win our side of the division, get to Atlanta, win there, and bring home a third straight record-setting national championship. Second down, nine. Short throw, caught there, love it. Makes a tackler miss and gets down to the 41 and moves the chains. This is a secondary that struggled to tackle in the open field. We saw Georgia do that very well against Florida last weekend. But they're finding these short underneath routes running after the catch being very effective here. Love it, of course, the former Tiger. Out of East St. Louis High School. Same high school, by the way, as Luther Burton. They were not teammates. They missed each other by a year. East St. Louis had a, uh, a playoff game today. Oh, big hit. Ball's loose. It's incomplete. Rosamie Jackson was the intended receiver. And it was Charleston, Joseph Charleston, who got him. That's film study right there. Rosamie Jackson coming across. 
in motion. You have to trigger quickly from that back end, and Charleston certainly did that to force that ball free. This crowd has gotten really quiet after that hit. Now let's see if the Tigers can build off of that first down win and try to get something going here on second down. Beck loads up, fires, McConkey at the 10, holds on at the 7. Good job of protection. Beck able to set his feet and throws a beautiful ball that McConkey goes up and snatches out of the air. Drayden Norwood just let him get inside of him. McConkey had to sit there and wait on the football, but brings down another big play, and Georgia's knocking on the red zone again. 33 yards back to McConkey. Edwards. Joseph Charleston got him by the legs. Gain of one. Ball at the eight. Second and goal. Georgia's really good down here in the red zone, and when they get in the low red zone, they like to rely on that offensive line. They'll also run some stuff on the perimeter. They'll run draws with Carson Beck. This would be a huge win for Missouri if they can get the stop here and force the field goal, but the way Georgia's playing, that's not going to be easy. Second goal from the eights. Kendall Milton in the backfield. Beck going to keep it. Has a little bit of daylight. It is going to get maybe three yards to the five. Well, if I'm George made the stop. Sorry, partner, but if I'm calling what Beck's going to do out here, clearly Missouri's keyed in on that as well. And that's what's tough. You start to get some tendencies about what you're going to do. But at the end of the day, you got to block people. So Mike Bobo in a situation like this, this low in the red zone with the way their defense is playing, maybe this becomes two attempts here to get this ball in the end zone, depending on what happens here on third down. Third and goal. Back firing end zone. Caught. Touchdown. It's Delp. This is just timing. There's Delp right there. Turns, boom. That ball's out of Carson Beck's hand before the secondary, and Trevez Johnson even knew what happened. That was in sync. Yeah, they missed Bowers, but that's the sort of plays they've been expecting out of Delp. Bowers understudy. Oscar Delp, third touchdown this season. And Georgia has some distance over Missouri. 24-13 for the number two. A brief lead to start the second half with a field goal. You see Brock Bowers complimenting his uh, his backup. Oscar Delp with a touchdown catch. And now it, it's, it feels like gut check time for Mizzou. It certainly does. Georgia made some really nice adjustments, found the way to get the football into Ladd McConkey's hands, and their defense has held serve and been able to get the ball back for their offense, and Missouri's got to figure out some things offensively to make sure this thing doesn't start to creep away from them. This time a fair catch by Marquise Johnson. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC standings. And keep in mind, as you see, Missouri trying to get to four and one. Georgia, obviously, has won 25 straight games. They want to go to nine and zero and six and zero. Put them in the driver's seat for the SEC championship. But there's tough games coming for Georgia. They've got Ole Miss and Tennessee, number 10 and number 17 coming up. Missouri has Tennessee at home next week. Tennessee's ranked number 17 in the country. All right, here we go. Brady Cook, Cody Schrader, Luther Burden, and the rest of the Missouri offense. Down 11, in the road, on the road, in a hostile environment. Schrader bounced out of bounds by Jamon Dumas Johnson. Looks like a late hit on Jamon Dumas Johnson. 
Missouri checked out of that play and elected to run stretch into the boundary. That's a face mask. And it's not Lewis Johnson, even though they announced it. It was Smile Munden who had the face mask. And I'm not so sure that that wasn't a late hit on Dumas Johnson, so maybe they just combined it. But nonetheless, it's a costly penalty for Georgia. We've seen Missouri's defensive penalties extend drives. Now the sudden Missouri's here across the 40, a perfect place for them to take some of the deep shots like they did in the first half and connected on. Final half minute, third quarter. Missouri... At their own 42. Brady Cook slings it down the field. Oh! Off the hands of Burden. Tight coverage there by Kamari Lassiter. Kamari Lassiter's one on one. He's just got to turn and run. He's a big bodied safety, but he gets that left hand into the hands of Luther Burden, running with him step for step, and Glenn Schumann's unit holds tight there. To start this second set of series. Missouri changes the play. Got to watch the play clock. Got to get it off. Second and ten. They beat the clock. Cook can't beat the rush. Dumas Johnson. Right at the line of scrimmage, third and ten. And he's hurt, Rich. Something's not right. Dumas Johnson made a great job with the tackle here, but I think he paid the price. Missouri facing a long third down. When we get back and start the fourth quarter, 24-13, Georgia. Still seven total on his way out. Favoring that left shoulder and a big moment here in this game. That's Jalen Walker, his replacements. Missouri is down 24 13. Third down and 10. Their own 42. Blitz comes. Cook stands in. Now he's flushed. Looking. Throwing. Got a man. Caught there. That's Cooper. And Cooper's out of bounds with a first down. This was a great job of just a scramble drill. Here's Cooper up here at the top of the screen. He's going to run and shake this corner here and get to the second level. But when he sees that Cook's in trouble, he does exactly what he should, which is come back to the football. He's able to secure the catch, turn for the sticks, and get the first down. It's the biggest lead of the game. Georgia 24-13. Trader right side. You talk about the stretch play. Interpret that for those that don't have the Aaron Taylor football <laughs> glossary. Well, it's a zone blocking scheme where linemen at the line of scrimmage are double teaming the down linemen up to the linebackers, but it's designed to hit the perimeter and it's all about staying on track. And Schrader does it as well as anybody. Schrader's got another first down. Missouri's moving. Ball at the 35 of Georgia. I unfortunately saw Terrell Davis use that play quite a bit on us in Super Bowl 32. But it's really hard to block because you create the surfaces and you have a back that can stick his foot and puncture the defense to get north and south. It becomes really hard to defend. Trader has gotten better as the day has grown longer. He's got 87 yards on the ground. Cook stands in, fires, man open, caught at the 12. Makai Miller took a... Big hit and holds on. That's a big gain for Missouri down to the 12 of 23 yards. Great double move here out on the outside by Makai Miller and just shakes Lassiter and Javon Bullard's too late getting over there. And that was a perfectly dialed up play for that situation. And Rich, to your point, here's a situation where Missouri really wants to get six here. And they may have a decision whether or not to go for two if they get the touchdown. Inside the 12. This is Nate Pete. And he ran into Zion Logue, all 6'5, 310 pounds. And there's no gain. Second down and 10. Yeah, you love patience as a running back, but that was a little too patient for Pete, who didn't play last week in their game a couple weeks ago against South Carolina.
three receivers bottom of your screen. The inside receiver is Luther Burden the third. He's caught a touchdown. Play clock is down again. Crowd is up again. Schrader, Schrader, Schrader is in! Touchdown, Missouri! 12 yards, and the Tigers answer back, and let's see if they go for two. This is just a stretch play. Beautiful job taking a look to see if he got himself inside, and clearly that's a touchdown, Rich. We talked about Schrader getting stronger as the game wore on, and he's certainly done that. And we mentioned a couple plays ago whether or not they go for two to make this a three-point game, and that's exactly what they're doing here. I like this call. The fourth quarter, you're not chasing points here. You're giving yourself a chance to win. Hook rolling and looking firing they got it there's a flag down caught in the back of the end zone flag on the play conversion is good and we await the call offside defense number 23 lined up in the neutral zone with the snap henry's decline fry is good that's one of the biggest drives of the year for missouri well, Missouri's on the road trying to get themselves back to Atlanta. They rely on the run game. Schrader punches it in, and then the two-point conversion to make it a three-point game. Burden puts his foot in the ground, and the Tigers are within three. The holidays are here, and so are the savings at Zales. This weekend only, take 30% off everything. At Zales. The three for me only at Chili's serves up bottomless drinks, bottomless chips and salsa, and a cheeseburger and fries for just $10.99. Hey, it's three for me, not three for us. This Chili's three for me is the best $10.99 you can eat. The neighborhood. It's where life comes alive, art thrives, and where those who are looking to be moved stay. Which is why it's always where you'll find a Hotel Indigo. From the streets of Tokyo to the sights of Dubai. So don't just visit a place. Dive into it. Get caught up in it. Then find calm in it. Hotel Indigo, the world's neighborhood hotel. A part of IHG Hotels and Resorts. Here's a look at our IHG Hotels and Resorts game recap. SEC East Showdown, number 12, Missouri, number two, Georgia. Carson Beck and Georgia, and this great Georgia defense bringing it early. The Oscar Delt touchdown. They opened up a 24-13 lead, but Cody Schrader with a touchdown. Luther Burden catches the two-point conversion. And all of a sudden, Aaron Taylor, it's 24-21. Rich, this is what we were hoping for. We started this show talking about what was on the line, a record-setting three straight national championships, a return to Atlanta, winning the SEC East like Missouri did back in 13 when they came into this league. I'm just really impressed by Missouri's resilience, really the resilience by both of these teams. These are two teams that believe that they're good enough to win this game but only one of them's gonna have the chance to prove that. That kid is impressive. Cody Schrader, the walk-on, the former Division II running back. He's got 99 yards and 21 carries. Mevis gets a foot into it. This is Muse, he's dangerous. Breaks a tackle, uh -oh. news, shakes another, and gets all the way out to the 35. The ghosts that launched a worldwide phenomenon are jumping across the pond and landing on CBS. Hey, we say cheers to that. See it from the beginning. The UK ghosts starts haunting us on Thursday, November 16th, here on CBS. 34 yards on that return. Missouri's defense 
looking for a stop. Carson Beck in Georgia's offense wants to keep the football, run some clock, and get more points. Back to throw, quick one, sideline, caught. Ra Ra Thomas, about 10 yards. We'll see if he stepped out before the marker, and he did. Gain of nine. Nice job by Rakestraw to get him down right away. On that simple route where he stops and catches it, we've seen Missouri's defense miss a lot of tackles and take a simple small gain and turn it to a much bigger one. The Tigers have to tackle well on the perimeter here in the fourth quarter. 44-yard line. Might take a shot here if you're Georgia. Still got a very makeable third and short if you don't hit it. Missouri shows blitz. And Edwards tries to slip through it. I think he has enough for the first down. Jake Jernigan made the stop. One of the things I was really impressed with Carson Beck at the end of that Florida game, Rich, was the way that he was in command and chewing the clock. There was a couple series down towards the end of the game with about seven minutes left where he huddled up his offense. He was talking to each position about what the play call was going to be. He was pointing to the play clock. He was in complete control and command, and we asked him if things had slowed down for him. He said, yeah, I practiced those situations in every play call on the play sheet the night before the game. I was ready for that moment. Here comes the blitz. Back pocket throws. Delp has the catch. Delp with a big gain down to the 31. He caught the touchdown, and now he's deep into Missouri territory. Well, you live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. You see Missouri on that second level vacate that space, and it's a perfect play call to run where they weren't. And Missouri getting away with a face mask there at the end to boot. That is a break for Missouri. Could have easily added 15. We've seen Oscar Delp kind of develop, had a couple catches in the last couple games. They target him. He had a touchdown earlier. And now, when you look at him on the hoof, he locks, looks a lot like Brock Bowers. And so far, in a couple of these plays, he's played like him, too. A conky on a quick screen. And he's back to the line of scrimmage. Don't forget later in the game, it's the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's subs. Just an incredible job by both of these teams to stay in there. Missouri last year had taken Georgia to the deep end well into the fourth quarter, but then from the fourth quarter on, Georgia scored two touchdowns and broke it wide open. They remember that, so they want to bow their necks and get stiff here and walk out of here with a victory. It's a little pitch back for Beck, who fires to the end zone. Delk was engaged. And it's well over his head and incomplete. Georgia sideline wanted interference. This was an unbelievable fake by Beck. I couldn't really tell what was going on. It didn't look like he had the ball. He fakes it here. It's a pitch back with the reverse. Lovett throws him back the ball. and It looked like Delts cut his pattern short. The timing was funky on that. And it was hard to see Love it when he tossed that ball back to back. But I agree with you. Is just hand fighting there. But that ball was grossly overthrown. And Hopper, that's a long way to run for a outside linebacker on an athletic tight end. A dead ball penalty has been called. No, excuse me. They are. So they did call it. Did call it. Pass interference. So pass interference is going to bring the ball just outside the 15. That's a big flag. Beck grounds the ball, and a flag comes down. Now the officials are going to get together to see if there was a receiver in the area there. And they may pick it up. But pass interference was called on a ball that looked like it was way over the head of Delp. Yeah, Missouri has bailed out this Georgia offense multiple times with penalties in this ball game. And remember, Georgia is one of the least penalized teams in the country and in the SEC. Pass interference, offense number 30, 15-yard penalty, first down. Not something you see every day, pass interference on a running bell. Dejon Edwards was in the pattern.
Obviously, Kirby Smart doesn't like this call. Looking at OPI on Dejon Edwards. All right, let's see if we got a look. The ruling on the field is offensive pass interference because the pass crossed the line of scrimmage. The previous play is under further review. Now, they, they can't review pass interference, but they can review if the ball went past the line of scrimmage. The call on the field was OPI, right? Yes. Offensive pass interference was the original call. They're trying to run a screen here, and that's one of the great ways that you take advantage. I think they're looking to see if he's past the line of scrimmage. Tough to tell from there. Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, help us out here. You know what I think they're looking at, guys, is where did the ball fall in relation to the pass with 86 downfield and engaging. If that ball is landing behind, then you're into players allowed to be downfield beginning to engage. It looks to me that 86's block is definitely more than a yard or two down the field. And from the looks that I'm getting, it looks like the ball is landing about a yard beyond the line of scrimmage, which would make it offensive pass interference. And that's my assumption on what they're looking at here, guys. That's a great clarification, Gene, because it's hard to tell ah. with Edwards there that that play was on him. That's what the call was on the field. That's a good point. They announced it on Edwards, but it looks like it's uh, Dylan Bell, 86. Yeah, you'll see that a lot. You're allowed to block downfield if the pass is behind. You'll run these submarine plays or these high plays with shallow crossing behind the line of scrimmage. It allows defenders to get downfield and start blocking quick. But with this ball being thrown past the line of scrimmage towards the receiver, it then makes what Dylan Bell does illegal. And that's not Bell's fault. That's the way he's taught. That's what he's supposed to do. It's just unfortunate because the pressure got there so quickly and Carson Beck was trying to throw the football away and it's really close to whether or not that ball was behind the line of scrimmage even though Edwards clearly was. Gene, you've seen a couple of looks now. What, what do you think after those last replays? The last one that I saw, Rich, is it looks like we've snapped the ball from the 17 and the ball may have landed like at the 17 and a half, which would put it behind the line of scrimmage. I'm sure that that's what they're deciding right now. We have the luxury of the blue line on our replay and a good job <laughs> here. But if you watch this and see where that ball lands, to me, it looks like it lands between the T and the the sign that that signifies and and I puts it at about the 17 and a half guys <laughs> good landmarks gene to direct our eyes i agree with you it looks like that ball's just short of the line of scrimmage this proves to be a huge call in this game from a field position and could be the difference between a touchdown and a field goal rich and in a game like this with this much on the line in the fourth quarter these are the sorts of things that determine outcomes so it's important that we get this right after further review there is no foul for offensive pass interference the line of scrimmage is the 17 the ball here at the 18 to be second down at the 17-yard line. Well done, Gene Sterator. Well done. So he's not just you know, in the lounge. Another point real quick, if I may, Aaron, too, is look, the quarterback is out of the pocket under pressure. Those that may be asking the ball didn't get back to the original line of scrimmage, they're right there, but it is not intentional grounding because number 30 for Georgia is in the vicinity. So that would negate an intentional grounding play in relation to the ball as well. There's a lot of different levels on that play, fellas. Yeah, absolutely. The result is second down and 10. 17-yard line of Missouri. George on the move. Up three. Under 10 minutes left to the ball game. Blitz comes. Beck throws. And it's off the hands of Ra Ra Thomas. Chris Abrams drain. Who's had a nice game today. Defending for Missouri. Yeah, coming into today, Abrams drain leads the SEC and was second in the NCAA with 10 passes defended. Add another one to the mix. They've been targeting him a little bit and had some success. Ra Ra Thomas should have brought that down. That was a well-thrown football that was catchable. Third down, 10. Watch Beck's legs. 
Delp and McConkey, bottom of the screen. Favorite targets today for Beck. Looks left, throws left, caught there. Love it. And Love it is short. Good closing speed there by Dalen Carnell. And this feels like a field goal attempt for Georgia. I agree. There's way too much at stake to try to be foolish here and be this aggressive. And credit the tackling in the open field by Carnell there. Something that Missouri hadn't done, but they tackle well there and force the field goal. Nice set of downs and a great win for the Tigers here. 30-yard attempt. Peyton Woodry, the freshman. He's made a 32-yarder. Remember, Beck is the holder. Carson Beck, the starting quarterback. That's very rare in college football. And that one is up, and it's good. And Georgia gets three points out of the drive. Missouri in striking distance. Nine minutes left in Athens. One of the many questions coming into this game was, is Missouri for real? Number 12 in the country. Seven and one, three and one in the SEC East. And they look like it. Nine minutes left here. In striking distance. Down six to the number two team in the country, Georgia. And of course, those are college football playoff rankings. We shifted this week in college football from the AP poll to the college football playoff standings. Seven twenty-one here. Let's go to New York and Adam Zucker. All right, Rich, check this out. Number six, Oregon was up 14-3. Watch the man in motion, number 50. Whip, the ball hits him. Noel Williams picks it up for Cal, and they score to make it 14-10. The Ducks only had two turnovers on the season coming in. They've already got two today. Everybody's in a close one today, guys. Offside, kicking team number 29. Five-yard penalty will be added. 25-yard line, first down. Absolutely, Adam. Cowell gave USC a scare. They're playing better. All right. Missouri's been moving it on the ground. That stretch play with Cody Schrader has been paying off. It certainly has, and that offensive line has responded to win. you got to play defense and run the football on the road. Now it's time for the big uglies to take over. Brady Cook out of the backfield. Catch there. Luther Burden, two men on him. Smile Munden made the catch. Let's take a look at the four game changer. It's Cody Schrader and his running, but that was a great job of blocking on that left side in particular. In this second half, he's been absolutely outstanding, keeping him clean up front, and that left side of that offensive line is at it again. And I got to tell you, Brandon Jones' unit is starting to take this game over in the third and fourth quarters. That's another big play. It's 13 yards. Why is the stretch play so difficult for Georgia to defend right now? Because it gets you running laterally as we're taking a look at Jamon Dumas Johnson. It gets you running laterally, and a player like Dumas Johnson, somebody that can come downhill. And linebackers, you don't have to destroy blocks. You have to neutralize them. But Missouri's making that really difficult. Right at midfield, eight minutes left, ball game. Miller in motion. Cook rolls right. Oh, he threw it away! Cooks had three interceptions in his last three games. This is just an ill-advised throw. It wasn't there. You got to throw this away. He was trying to get too cute and get that football return. over the top. The foul, blind side block. Georgia number two. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. It's on Smile Munden, the linebacker, but Nazir Stackhouse makes him pay for a very poor decision. So the interception stands, but the return is wiped out on a blindside block on the return. He had a pass breakup last week, and this is what happens if you're a defensive lineman and you don't get much of a pass rush. You get these opportunities. 
Nobody feels worse about that throw than Brady Cook. He knows he shouldn't have let it go. And now it's up to his defense to try to bail him out here. That, that's an enormous penalty. It goes from inside the five all the way back to the Georgia 30-yard line. And Rich, coming into this game, Georgia was one of the least penalized teams in the country. Now in this second half, it just seems to get more and more careless. Amanda, talking with Kirby Smart, said we had to do the simple things better, and the most disciplined team would win this ball game. Even with that great play, Georgia's got to tighten things up here to finish this game out. So Georgia at their 30. Edwards, Edwards cuts back, midfield, 48-yard line of Missouri. Dejon Edwards, 22 yards. And this is a pin and pull scheme where you're going to pull the center and the right guard with some down blocks out on the outside. Oscar Delp doing a nice job, and Edwards vision and burst do the rest. That's the biggest run of the day for Edwards. Ball into Missouri territory. Cook right now in the offense trying to regroup. He needs help from his defense. Blitz comes. Quick throw. McConkey catch inside the 45 and pushed out of bounds at the 42. Coming up, U.S. Army postgame show. Adam Rick, BJ, look ahead. As they shift the focus to the SEC West, LSU and Alabama finishes our triple header. It's coming up on the U.S. Army postgame show. Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs trying to win their 26th straight game. Trying to go to 9-0 and 6-0. Number 12, Missouri on the road has given Georgia all they could ask for. Rich, and this is getting to be do or die time because even a field goal makes this a two-score game for Missouri. It's critical that the Tigers keep Georgia out of the end zone and don't let them get a field goal here. Kendall Milton's got a first down to the 35. Clock continues to run down to six minutes, seven-yard game. And if you're Georgia, you get in a four-minute mode like we saw them do against Florida at the end of that game. And let these offensive line that struggled in pass protection early, let them take over and control the line of scrimmage. This is where Carson Beck was really good against Florida once they got the lead. Managing the clock, running the play clock down, getting the play off on time. Great shot of him there looking at the play clock. Snapping it with one second. Edwards again. Josh Landry this time hits him. If you're Georgia, you can't afford to take a sack because you take yourself out of field goal range. You also want to run the ball to take time off. So I'd be shocked unless something crazy happens here if we see Carson Beck put this football in the air. Time of possession favoring Georgia and growing by the second. And Missouri, with this potentially being a two-score game, they need every timeout they can, so they just got to kind of sit here and be patient and hope that one of their players can make a play, strip the ball, or get a pick. Pick, standing, firing, knocked down. That was at the second level, and it was Chuck Hicks who got the start with the injured Chad Bailey out. And that's why you want to be careful putting the football into the air. Chuck Hicks gets his hand on this. If he's a little bit more athletic and gets there a half a step sooner, he might have plucked this out. I don't know if Beck saw him there. And this, I, I mean, this is at the very edge of Peyton Woodring's field goal range. And if they don't gain anything here, it's a 52-yarder. His longest this year is only 44. Man, hand it to 30 and let him do his thing. Beck fires it. Caught by Edwards, but he's brought down at the 30-yard line. And so if you're Georgia, the freshman kicker Woodring is on. His longest is 44. This is going to be about a 47-yarder. That was a really nice tackle that time by Drayden Norwood on that outside edge. Norwood's had some struggles today, some penalties, but he really needed to get Edwards on the ground, and he did. It's going to be 48 yards. From the left hash. Ooh, buddy. Just a freshman. Longest one he's attempted. 
Snap is good. Kick is good. Huge three points for Georgia. Two score game now. Under four minutes left. Number two, Georgia. The pressure's on Eli Drinkwitz and number 12, Missouri. Peyton Woodring. Big moments. Freshman kicker. Jenny Dell standing by in Tuscaloosa here in Athens. 93,000 strong. They've seen the Bulldog offense be very productive and chew up a lot of clock. Invesco brings you today's scholar athletes, Brady Cook of Missouri, Marvin Jones Jr. of Georgia. Invesco is proud to support student athletes on and off the field. Donation to both Missouri and Georgia's general scholarship funds. Now, Missouri need two scores, have all their timeouts at about four minutes a clock. Yeah, they've been able to take some big chunk plays a day. They've had three plays over 30 plus yards through the air and a couple others of 20 plus. But decision making by Brady Cook and pass protection by that O line are critical. Cook, time, fires, Burton can't hold it. Kamari Lassiter. This is a ball that Burden has to bring down as Lassiter seems to be slow to get up, grabbing that right hip area. That could be a huge blow on what could prove to be this game's most important drive. We will step aside with the injury and be back up and on the sideline. 30 to 21, Georgia on top. Early in this game, Brady Cook escaped the pocket and hurt Georgia. That has changed. It certainly has. Glenn Schumann has made some adjustments, has started spying him and playing less man coverage so that the rush is able to collapse and get home. The result of that is Brady Cook had 57 rush yards in the first half, zero here in the second. That difference and that adjustment could be just what Jordan's needed to walk away from here victorious. Cook on second and ten. Four-man rush. Lots of time. Swing pass. Schrader with the catch. Breaks one tackle. Gets popped at the 27. And this is going to be a long third down and an enormous one for Missouri. And Missouri does have three timeouts. So depending on what the clock is, you think that you have to strongly consider whether or not this was four down territory. You'd love to not have to make that decision here and pick this up here on third. Band is playing, crowd is roaring. Third down eight, blitz comes, Cook flips it out. Schrader with the catch, excuse me, that's Weiss. And he makes the catch right at the 40, that's a first down. Rich, I don't know if Brady Cook was ready for this snap. Again, the crowd noise, we've seen this before. He's looking to his left, looking to his right. He's so lucky that he fielded that. What a break for Missouri, and what a great play by Weiss and Cook. 13 yards and a first down. Again to the sideline. Again to Weiss, who was tangled up with Dalen Everett. Second and ten. Three minutes left. Nice play there by Dalen Everett. He certainly has been targeted more this year. And you look at the secondary of Georgia, which is so good. He's what some would call the, the weak link. But when they need him to step up and make plays, he's done that just like he did right there. Georgia's had two sacks so far today. If you're Brady Cook, you can't afford a lost yardage play. Four-man rush. Cook trying to escape. Hit from behind and dropped. Jalen Walker. That's a loss of four. Back-to-back -back weeks that Jalen Walker, who's playing for the injured Jamon Dumas Johnson, gets himself home, and he does it with effort. That's a really tough block on Javon Foster, the left tackle, to have to carry him all the way around. Georgia shows blitz, and here they come. Cook escapes, flips it down the field, and it's incomplete. Julian Humphrey on Theo Weiss, no flags. This is fourth down and 14. Decision time here for Missouri and feels like they've got to go for it here. Great job bringing pressure by Glenn Schumann that forces the errant throw. And a 
again, nice coverage by Julian Humphrey. And Rich, this is ball game. Comes down to this. Missouri needs 14 yards. Play clock running down. Cook changing the play. Oh, he wasn't ready for it again. Fires to the sideline. Back shoulder caught. That's Weiss again. And again, the snap surprised him. And again, he hits Weiss for that's the first the, down. That's the third time this has happened in this game. And it's almost helping him. It seems to throw the defense and the timing off. And Theo Weiss, one-on-one -on -one against Everett, comes up huge again. But, man, Brady Cook, baseball in his pass. He must have been a shortstop. He's doing an excellent job fielding these errant snaps. And it's this crowd that's making this drive so excruciatingly difficult. Balls at midfield. Cook now. Timeout. Yes, Georgia. Kirby Smart saw something he didn't like. Gets the timeout. Eli Drinkwitz. Timeout. Georgia. The first of the half. The ruling on the field is a Missouri on the move, down. but down Coach by. The While we're away, the officials are reviewing not the catch, but the spot where Weiss went out of bounds. The line to gain was right at the 50. Weiss makes the catch. He's backing up. The call on the field is first down. They've already moved the chains. And let's bring Gene Steratore in to walk us through this. Gene? Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing, Rich. And I think when they did initially rule first down so quickly, Coach Smart was questioning that spot. So that's why he called the timeout and really asked for and really ask for a review there, guys. Now, remember, when a player is airborne crossing the sideline, it is where the football is in relation to that line when the football crosses the sideline as well. So as much as we're looking at that foot landing just beyond the 50, he's backpedaling, the football is in front of him, but it is a matter now that they did rule first down, and we'll see what the, re what the review says uh, from Steve Marlowe right now. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Missouri. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Missouri. Not enough to overturn or confirm. And so Missouri stays alive. Thank you, Gene. Minute 53 left here. Missouri, importantly, has all three of their timeouts. Well, with a minute 53, Missouri needs to consider if they get within field goal range to save some time, they will have the option to kick a field goal should that warrant. It's taken them some time to get this far down. They've got to be able to get some chunk yardage here to make sure that the clock doesn't become a factor. But to your point, those three timeouts are really helpful for them to have here. Blitz comes. Pump fake. Hit as he throws. And that one is over the head of Makai Miller. Georgia brought pressure. Yeah, Malachi Starks is one of the best athletes on the team. Super good at hoop, super athletic, and he's just absolutely in the hip pocket as the pressure got there late for Brady Cook and gets his hand on it at the last minute. And Cook's got to give him an opportunity to catch that football. It really pressed his receiver up against the out-of-bounds line. Second and ten. Cook, another back shoulder throw. That's almost been exclusive on this drive, and he misses Mookie Cooper. It's third and ten. It's almost been exclusive to this drive, and all to the left-hand side at some point. Double move or try to move the target area. George is really saturating that area. We've got third and long here now. Let's see what Kirby Moore dials up. And does Georgia bring pressure? Do they stay back and play coverage here? Georgia brings three. Cook with time. Rolling right. Firing on the run. Long. Uh -oh. And picked. And picked. Bullard has it. Georgia intercepts it. And the Bulldogs have the ball. And in all likelihood... in a row, Missouri.
Missouri needs some real magic. Down nine, a minute 36 left. Coaches told us that Javon Bullard loves football, plays the game with a chip on his shoulder. They only rush three. Cook tries to buy himself time because there's nowhere to throw. He should have never released this football. You don't throw across your body rolling to the right deep into double coverage, and that's exactly what he did in the biggest interception of the entire season for Missouri is a ball that should have never been thrown. Kirby Spart told us nobody loves football on this team more than Javon Bullard. Now, it's a two-score game, minute 36 left. All of the timeouts left for Missouri, but Edwards stumbling and is knocked out of bounds. There's a player down. Edwards was unable to stay in bounds. And that's a mistake. You would have liked Edwards to stay there, but there's an injured Tiger down on the floor. That's Realis George Jr. and will return after this. Out of Milledgeville, Georgia, with the interception that may have sealed this game. That's Bullard's first interception of the entire season, and man, oh man, was it a big one. Because Edwards didn't get out of bounds, Missouri doesn't have to use a timeout. But Missouri's going to have to stop Edwards or somebody. And this is Edwards, left side. Tigers are going to call a timeout, you'd expect. That was a good, no, strong finish run where it didn't even sound like there was a whistle. They let that play go on for quite some time. Yeah, this is what you want to do, Rich. you got to be able to ice it. And so Missouri does not use a timeout. It's that waving of the white flag, I guess. And if that's the case, you would expect Man. Beck to take a knee, and Georgia will have won their 26th consecutive game. Wow. But I'll tell you what, even though they're going to lose this football game, I think Missouri made a statement here. Coming on the road in a really tough environment, and this game was tight almost the entire way. And Georgia will win this game 30 to 21. Well, Kirby Smart told us, Rich, we got to dominate with discipline. The most disciplined team is going to win this game, and in the end, Carson Beck and his entire Bulldog team in that defense rose to the occasion. And Georgia's quest for history, being the first team to win three national championships, first by starting to win the SEC East, marches on. Absolute driver's seat right now at 6-0, 9-0. They still have number 10 Ole Miss in here next week and then are on the road against number 17 Tennessee before finishing against Georgia Tech. But this feels like they can at least uh, block out some rooms in Atlanta for the SEC championship. This is arguably Kirby Smart's best coaching job. With the talent that he lost, with the youth and the injuries, done an excellent job.